did with Will and Becky was like blue, and I remember that. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be discussing 10 wrestlers who died in the ring. He died at a hospital early Saturday morning, reportedly suffering from trauma to his neck. For this list, we'll be remembering those warriors of the squared circle who tragically died doing what they loved. Do you have any memories of these performers? Let us know in the comments below. Brian Ong The death of Brian Ong may not have been televised or even relegated to a non-canonical house show, but that doesn't make the circumstances involving this accident any less tragic. Ong was actually in a training session together with WWE's The Great Khali, aka Dalip Singh Rana, and was already suffering from a concussion. That alone should have stopped the training exercise within California or pro wrestling, as the very green Ong wasn't even fitted with proper gear for the work. Then, a flapjack attempt by Khali was botched when Ong forgot his safety protocol for the sequence. The wrestler landed badly on his head and tailbone, and these injuries, combined with APW's poor response time in seeking medical attention, directly resulted in Ong's death. Plum Mariko <laughs> Japan, alongside countries like Mexico and the United States, possesses one of the richest professional wrestling heritages in the world. That said, the Japanese wrestling industry successfully avoided an in-ring death prior to 1997, when the promising career of Plum Mariko was tragically cut short. <laughs> Mariko was talented, but she was also accident-prone, and her injuries directly led to the athlete developing an abscess in her brain. Mariko ignored physicians' warnings about her concussions, and she continued to wrestle. Then, at a wrestling show in Hiroshima, Mariko took a Liger bomb from her opponent, Mayumi Ozaki. She passed out as a result of the move, with officials claiming that the abscesses in her brain opened up, eventually leading to her death. Jeanette Wolf Janet Boyer Wolf competed professionally under the alias of Jeanette Wolf during the formative age of women's professional wrestling. She came from industry royalty as the foster daughter of legend Mildred Burke, and worked matches alongside icon Mae Young. Unfortunately, we'll never know exactly how exalted Wolf's career could have been, thanks to a horrible 1951 in-ring occurrence. It took place during the second of two matches Wolf had that day, the first of which ended with a basic body slam. Wolf was complaining of headaches after taking this move, but went on with her second match as scheduled. She collapsed on the ring apron during this match and never woke up, suffering a fatal brain hemorrhage minutes into the contest. She was 18. Oro We mentioned Mexico earlier on our list, with its lucha libre style of professional wrestling serving as one of the country's cultural legacies. Oro performed as a luchador in this style, as a masked wrestler with an impressive arsenal of aerial maneuvers. Oro! As part of the Hernandez family, famed within the Lucha Libre community, we as fans can only wonder what might have been, if not for an unfortunate accident. The fall that Oro took on his head was pre-planned together with his opponents. But this decision to add drama to the contest directly resulted in Oro's death. The fall reportedly triggered a brain aneurysm, and Oro never made it into a hospital ambulance. He was only 21 years old. Gary Albright He was the unsung hero of the legendary Anoa'i wrestling family, the bloodline that's produced such stars as Roman Reigns, The Usos, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Get it! Albright married into the family with his wife Monica, and he enjoyed a distinguished career as the rough and ready master of the suplex in promotions such as All Japan and Stampede Pro Wrestling. Albright was performing as usual for the company World Extreme Wrestling on January 7, 2000, when a bulldog maneuver by his opponent left Albright unconscious in the ring. Gary had suffered a heart attack in the ring, partially as a result of his diabetes and poor coronary history. A tribute show would later be held in his honor. Very special man, Gary Albright, who was a friend and a family member, and uh, he's going to be dearly missed. Moondog Spot 
For wrestling fans of a certain generation, a tag team known as the Moondogs will always be remembered for their wild and unpredictable antics. One of the members of that team, Moondog Spot, also worked as a solo star and booker throughout the 1970s and 80s. Fast forward to 2003, however, and Spot, born Larry Booker, had long since left active regular competition. This didn't stop the Moondog from working a match for a special birthday celebration for Jerry the King Lawler, however, a decision that would ultimately lead to his death. Moondog Spot's fate was similar to that of Gary Albright's, with the man suffering a fatal heart attack as a result of the physical exertion combined with his personal history of diabetes. Emiko Kado The career of Emiko Kado was over almost as quickly as it began. The Japanese pro wrestler was a rookie performer at only 23 years old, working only 15 matches before the tragic events of March 31, 1999. A blow to the head during a tag team contest knocked Kado unconscious, and it was later revealed that the injury had resulted in massive intracerebral bleeding. Although Kado would later die in a hospital on April 9th, it was the events in the ring that directly led to this outcome, only the second time a Japanese professional wrestler would die as a result of her work in the ring. Pero Aguayo Jr. The life and legacy of Pero Aguayo Jr., born Pedro Ramirez, may not be as comparatively well-known outside of Mexican wrestling circles, but the circumstances surrounding his death made headline news back in 2015. Officials in Tijuana, Mexico want to know why a pro wrestler died after a match. This was due to the performer standing across the ring from Aguayo, the WWE's own Rey Mysterio Jr. The pair were performing in a tag team contest against each other when Rey went for one of his trademark moves, the 619. It was the setup for this move that caused Aguayo's death, as Ray's dropkick reportedly fractured three vertebrae. The trauma from this impact resulted in Aguayo suffering a heart attack and he died almost instantly. I have no words for this terrible news. Mitsuharu Misawa Mitsuharu Misawa is unequivocally one of professional wrestling's all-time best. He was also one half of what is often argued as the best professional wrestling match of all time, a bout against rival Toshiaki Kawada on June 3, 1994. Fast forward 25 years later, however, and it would be another June match that would serve as Misawa's fatal swan song. The 46-year-old was competing in a tag team when he failed to get up from the ring after receiving a back suplex. Although no official cause of death was released, it was thought that the impact from the move resulted in severe cervical damage. This was echoed in a statement by Hiroshima Police in the aftermath of Misawa's tragic passing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Owen Hart Owen changes into his blue blazer costume, and the rigging crew readies him for his descent. The memory of the life and career of Owen Hart still burns brightly within the hearts of all his fans. This is despite the horrible events that led to his death on the evening of May 23, 1999, at the WWF's Over the Edge pay-per-view. Hart accidentally fell from the Kemper Arena rafters to the ring below after preparing an entrance that required a quick-release drop. The mechanisms holding Owen let go too soon, leaving the over-the-edge viewers at home and in the arena stunned. And I'm thinking in my head, what the heck was that? And when I turned and looked, there was Owen. He was like laying in the ring, like face up. A wrongful death lawsuit from Owen's widow, Martha, followed and the WWF slash WWE eventually settled the case for $18 million. But it was little comfort for the void Owen's loss left behind. I didn't care about the money. I wasn't about money for me. I wanted this case to go to trial. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.